Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm going to get these trusses in place. But first, I'm going to show you some video of trimming the trusses, which was actually Two evenings ago I had trimmed the trusses all the way until it was getting pretty dark and then yesterday I could not do a damn thing because we had volleyball Natalie had volleyball early in the morning and it was a five game thing so we didn't get home until early evening and then it was you know too late to start on this stuff so I, I went and did some sprays back in here and oh in the little blue stem and all over the place and I did that until dark so kind of a wasted day yesterday but I'll make up for it today while I'm over here just noticing my oats is coming up I'm surprised how long it's taken to come up usually this stuff just comes up nearly instantly so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get Natalie to water this today just right in a couple spots but especially right behind the house doesn't seem to be sprouting there that much but okay so I'll show the video of me trimming these it'll go super quick and then we'll get these laid out and put in place Okay, so I have these all positioned, ready to throw up there. Easier said than done. But first, I need to mark the locations up on top. I probably should have did that first before these are in the way, but no big deal. Um, they are, they go exactly where the studs are. They're 16 inches on center really overkill but it's a flat roof and I want it to be able to hold uh, a big snow load without any problem so I'm not taking any chances I'm just going 16 on center instead of 24 the wall is 16 on center well it's headered out so it's very very strong all right, let's get these marked and get the trusses up there. Okay, we're a little bit wet from the dew, but that's okay. All right, now I have one that is, eh, I, I don't really need to lay it out right now. But I have one way at the end here and it has a rim joist connected right to it but the rest of them are 16 inches on center so I want to go three quarters of an inch I always put both lines there 
uh, most carpenters just put one line and a and an X to mark the location of stud. This is wet from the dew and I really don't have time to let things dry out this morning. I really got to hustle. So much stuff came in the way of this project because this was kind of this project was kind of jammed in on top of other projects so okay and then yeah I can still see them but it's not ideal now oh, that's good enough Okay, so like this, a bunch of times, I also need to measure in an inch and a quarter on each one. That's where the trusses will end, but I'm going to use my combination square for that. So I go get that set up, and then we're off to the races. Okay, all the trusses are marked. I had to go get the heat gun. It was just way too wet in areas and I couldn't even get a line on there. And I want crisp, clear lines. Don't want any mistakes, or I want less mistakes. So, I go put this away. I'll show you the layout. As I said before, it's 16 inches on center, so it's real easy to lay out. It started drying when I got to about right there. It was dry anyway, so it got a little bit easier. So like I said, these fall right, the trusses fall right on top of studs where there is a stud. So it's going to be strong as hell. I've been pondering this, what to do with this water. I probably should have put a T here, but I wanted, I was more interested in being able to shut it off. And I was probably correct in doing that. I have another valve just like this, and I was going to come over and then put a T here and have a line going for the water heater over here and then go up and then put that next valve and run an empty line over to the end there. But we never decided 
or I never decided if I'm going to invest in in uh, PEX tools or if I'll just run run copper for right now. I need two sticks of copper to make it to the other end and I don't want to I can't I was thinking I was going to run it up right come over and run it up right here and have both of these this is inside the wall out to here so whatever I put here if I put a valve here I got a box out for it and I didn't want to box out twice but it looks like I'm going to have to because I'm going to have to come over because of that duct right there I have to uh, either uh, I need to come re either real close to this but then yeah if if I go I have to come over the into the um, trusses right here and actually that would run right into this if I did it the same as that. So I'm going to have to be careful on that. And then it pinches down pretty tight. Yeah, I'm better off going way over towards the center. I'm going to put a my bracing on that center one there so it looks like somewhere I'm gonna have to box out put the other valve come up and go to that brace because the brace is over the door yeah the brace will be on right there on the flat side of that uh, that member there so my my plumbing would have to come around and onto this side ah that makes life more difficult or i can just come up put a valve on it come up and figure on pecs come up come in into the bay a little bit and figure on doing pecs then I can I can just run the stuff anywhere just put a bend and come right through here yeah I guess that's what I'll do thing is it it costs you know a couple hundred dollars for the tools if you get the the stretchy I don't even want to know what it's called there's the crimp on pecs and then there's uh, expansion pecs and the expansion stuff is uh, I guess it's better um, I don't know about longevity but it's definitely better in that it doesn't reduce the water flow it has full water flow so that's probably what we'll go with but then I gotta buy a new tool yeah, the reason I'm, I'm going through all this uh, anguish here is because I got to get this in before I put this last truss in. Because look at how tight it is right here. This is even less than 16, you know, and there's no way I can fit in this little tiny space and mess. Well, I can do it, but I. I absolutely don't want to. So, should I do this first or should I get the trusses up? I think I'm going to start putting trusses up. I've been waiting too damn long to get these things up. I can get all the way to here and then finish this up and then put this last one in. So what I'll do is do like I said put both valves in in the box here um, the wall the wall comes out to here so I'll box out get both valves in there 
and have one valve that runs to this. I'll come back up through here and just elbow out into the into the opening right here into the bay and then turn put an elbow here and then put a, a, a PEX fitting on there. I don't even have to put the fitting on there right now because it'll have a valve on it. So I'll just keep the valve shut off. Okay, that's my plan and I'm sticking with it. So let's get going on these trusses. Okay, so I have my first truss laid out. As I said before, this is a rim board will go right here, which is going to turn into the parapet up higher. And that has to go all the way around. So this outer truss is going to sit about right here and it's going to have room for the rim board. And it also needs to be set back for the rim board along this side, well, both sides. So I have a mark here. What I'm going to do is pull one up here and joggle it around and hopefully it doesn't fall on me. I need to jog it into place roughly and then I'm going to throw a clamp on either end and then throw a uh, couple of clamps in the middle and if it's holding really well I'm just going to leave it as is. If it starts getting windy, I might brace it or something. But Izzy is just going nuts. She's burning off energy right now. So she's invent she invents games <laughs> that always involve running really fast. She just ran around the house, I don't know, a dozen times. Crazy dog. Okay, so I'm going to get it in place. I'm going to clamp it in place. And then this is the first truss that's actually acting like a truss that spans. And that one I will brace. And then we'll see going, moving forward. I'm going to try screwing them one, two. It's going to end up having hurricane straps. And I don't know if I should put those in immediately i mean they'll help hold it hold it up until i get them all in but i'm always afraid i'm going to have to pull something out and those uh hurricane straps i'm going to nail in place so they're really hard to get out and they should be i guess but okay let's just get to it <laughs>
Okay. That's about as far as I'm going to take it. I'll put, I'll put another little brace in right here so this one's stable, but I'm going to get that plumbing stubbed out so I don't have to fit in that tiny little space. And I'll just leave two out so I got plenty of room. So I'm going to go get my equipment. I think I have most of it out here. Uh, all right, <laughs> that's going to take me a little bit. So I'm going to get my plumbing equipment and get this done and then uh, get the last two in. These are just screwed, one screw each, until I get the lower rim board in. And it, it should be today. This damn plumbing really eats up a lot of time, but hopefully I can get that in today. What I have to do is rip a rim board down to five and five eighths. And that's what the lower one is. And then the upper one is a full 16 inch rim board. And then that will give the final spacing on these trusses, both in depth how far in they are and their position they'll be screwed to the to the rim board and I'll take them temporary screws out I'll show you that when I get to it and then in the end they'll have hurricane straps at the bottom so that's what will be holding them down to the to the top joist and then of course the other the rim board Rim board is an inch and a quarter thick, so it's a it's a big piece of uh, lumber. So that'll be holding it perpendicular and in place. Altogether, it's uh, it's going to be incredibly strong, but hopefully that'll pull some of the twist and stuff out of these things. They're not bad, but a couple of them have, you know, your average twist, and between the rim boards and the bracing that I'll be putting in. I have to get the bracing in. It's 20 feet long. I have to slide it in here, lay out where each truss goes, slide it in here, and get it in place before I cap the, the far end. Same thing goes with this uh, copper pipe. Before I close off that back end, I have to get that long stuff in here because there's no way to get it get it in once once I cap that off. So let me get going on this copper and then I'll be back to put these last couple trusses in. Okay, it's hours later and my torch failed. I have two failed torches there, both burns a matic This one I just picked up and it's shot already after oh just a couple fittings so this is what i have here this this line is going to go up through the hole and have an elbow on it and then get stubbed off out there but i'm not going to be able to do it today I mean, it's Sunday, Labor Day weekend. I, I guess, you know, there's stuff in the big town open. Ah, unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. I mean, I've had this tip for a long time used it fl without any problems and then all of a sudden it start started uh, uh it just get barely gets any gas through it and they say it's you know probably the tip that needs to be cleaned but i can't get this damn thing apart you know how to, how the hell do you clean it and that one 
Uh, I got that one apart, but that didn't do any good. So, I don't know what to do with this crap. I, I think I'm going to get one of those um, push-button ones and be done with these damn uh, hand-lit ones. But I can't do that right now. So, I guess... I'm just going to put these other two trusses in place. I have, I have what I need for this plumbing. It shouldn't be too hard to get up there and solder the rest of this in once I, once I get a new torch set up. Man, does that suck. I mean, it was taking forever to start with. Then our new neighbors over there stopped by. Um, so we're, you know, talking with them and, uh, what a frustrating day. So I'm going to clean up temporarily. I, I need to bring all this stuff back out again when I finish this up, but I'm going to get these last two trusses up and then I'm going to start cutting this rim board and hopefully, hopefully I can get that on. Um, on both sides which will stabilize everything and hold it in place and then get the brace in today I've already been at this well, it's four o'clock I've already been at this since well sunrise so five something this morning all right let me clean up and get these last two trusses up. bad the torch went bad would have been nice getting this done but I have the vast majority of the stuff pre-assembled I got stuck on on this joint right here looks soldered but it's not that's just flux so hopefully I'll remember that tomorrow I gotta pull it apart clean it up again reflux it and get that soldered when I have the new torch head yeah what a shame got well it either way I would have had to stop right now anyways because it's about five o'clock and I don't want to I don't want to start putting in this rim joist at this time it's going to be dark in you know two hours that's a little chunk of the rim joist this is the bottom section this goes all the way around and then it gets a 16 inch piece on top of that and that will make the parapet and then that gets beefed up it has two by fours on the outside and one along along the top edge and other stuff make it nice and strong and it's screwed into the the trusses so when everything's screwed together and glued and stuff, this is going to be incredibly strong. But it's putsy work. So if you want to see all this stuff going together, uh, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon so you receive notice when I post the new videos. A like and a share would really help the channel out, so I'd appreciate if you do that. 
And if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.